Monday morning in Hiroshima City was cloudless and hot. Most of the population, women and children, hurried to work and schools when the sky was illuminated by a bright flash. In a matter of seconds, 50,000 people were literally wiped off the face of the earth. The temperature at the epicenter of the explosion was so high that only shadows of people remained on the asphalt. This is how humanity got acquainted with the nuclear bomb. The scientist developers themselves were shocked and embarrassed by the power they had given to the military. The power to destroy the whole world. Today we will tell you about the clock, means by which nuclear bomb creators attempted to warn the world of the threat of a nuclear apocalypse, how thermonuclear tests almost caused the end of the world, and when, according to scientists' calculations, nuclear war begins. Killian Murphy, as scientist Robert Oppenheimer strikingly accurately conveyed the range of emotions that the scientists of the Manhattan Project faced after the nuclear weapons tests. According to the scientists' own memories in 1945, with the detonation of the Trinity bomb, the dawn of the atomic age began. We knew the world would not be the same. Two people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Later, after the devastating nuclear strikes on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where at least 110 to 200,000 residents died, according to approximate data, the terrible truth was revealed. Humanity not only can destroy itself, but it is also moving towards this much faster than anyone could have ever imagined. On December 10th, 1945, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists was published, a magazine by nuclear weapon scientists warning the world about the dangers of using nuclear weapons in armed conflicts. Wait, they invented the atomic weapon and only then realized that this thing can kill a lot of people? You might ask. I must confess, you have an astonishingly good idea there, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Things are much more complicated than they seem at first glance. Chicago, 1942. One of the universities created the world's first nuclear reactor. It was imperfect. It had no cooling system, did not generate much energy, and operated for a short period of time. However, this event opened unprecedented opportunities for humanity. The potential power of an explosion of a bomb built on a chain nuclear reaction aroused the minds of both the military and scientists. Only their thoughts went in different directions. The U.S. military and political command saw nuclear weapons as a key element for world domination. The scientists saw their developments as a recipe for eternal peace, where no one would dare to fight, knowing the capabilities of nuclear weapons. It is just that no one understood these capabilities. During the first tests of the nuclear bomb, the possible results ranged from zero explosion force to the complete destruction of the state of New Mexico. There was even a thought that a nuclear explosion could trigger an uncontrolled burning reaction of atmospheric oxygen, which would lead to the complete disappearance of life on Earth. Thank goodness it did not happen that time. Let us move on to 1947. The post-war period, instead of peace and recovery, brought only new tensions. President Truman launched a campaign against the communist threat the so-called Truman Doctrine. The Soviet Union also pursued a course towards worsening relations. Under their pressure, the countries of Eastern Europe refused the Marshall Plan, a program for economic recovery after the war. Semi-open confrontation between the Western Allies and the USSR began, which would be called the Cold War. To visualize the danger posed by a global nuclear conflict, in 1947, the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists posted an image of a doomsday clock, set to seven minutes to midnight. This allegory was chosen by artist Martel Langsdorff, the wife of one of the physicists. As the artist herself noted, she chose a design that warns the public about how close we are to destroying our world with dangerous technologies of our own making. It is a metaphor, 
a reminder of the perils we must address if we are to survive on the planet. This analogy took root strongly in world culture. In books, films, music, the image of the doomsday clock served as a reminder that humanity at any moment, due to its arrogance, can disappear. For almost 80 years, the editorial board of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists has been moving the hands of the doomsday clock, forward or backward, measuring how much time humanity has left before a nuclear conflict. Over the years, we have been both a whisker away from the apocalypse and in relative safety. Let's go through some of the most important moments. 1948. The Soviets surprised the world by testing their own RDS-1 atomic development, also known as Joe one as named after Joseph Stalin in the USA. For the entire Western world, the tests came as a complete surprise, as intelligence insisted that the first successful prototypes in the USSR would not appear until the 1950s. As a result, the US hegemony was violated, and the countries became even more determined to prepare for future confrontation. The clock hands sharply shifted to three minutes before nuclear apocalypse. 1953. The faster the arms race gains momentum, the more adventurous it becomes. The United States, disregarding scientists' protests, begin testing a hydrogen or thermonuclear bomb, which was much more powerful and dangerous than its atomic cousin. At the same time, there were a few nuances in the tests. The device itself was not in the form of a bomb, but rather resembled a two-story building. In 1952, during the tests of the Ivy Mike bomb in Pacific Ocean, an entire island was wiped off the face of the Earth. Research aircraft that were supposed to study the effects of the explosion suffered serious radiation contamination. Their navigation sensors and altimeters failed. One of the three aircraft crashed on its way back to base. The Soviet Union again surprised the world by conducting its tests just nine months after the Americans. However, there was a peculiarity that frightened the West even more. Unlike US developments, which were far from complete, the Soviets tested and already ready to use the bomb. On August 12, 1953, during the tests, the RDS-6s yielded a power 20 times greater than the one dropped on Hiroshima. The clock was set to two minutes to the end of the world. However, even such closeness to the likely destruction of the world did not stop the countries from the arms race. In 1961, in the godforsaken archipelago called Novaya Zemlya, the most terrible weapon built by human hands was tested. From a plane that was specially upgraded to carry such cargo, a 50 megaton shell called Tsar Bomba was dropped. The test results exceeded all expectations of its developers. The flash of light was visible from a thousand kilometers away. It was seen in Alaska, Norway, and Greenland. The nuclear mushroom cloud rose almost 43.5 miles. Windows were shattered on the island Dixon, located 500 miles from the test site. The blast wave circled the Earth three times. This is what one such bomb can do to New York. In October 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis began. After the United States deployed medium-range cruise missiles in Turkey, the Soviet Union secretly deployed nuclear launchers on the island of Cuba, from where they could strike the southern states within minutes. The world was one step away from World War III, and possibly the last world war. Thank God the leaders managed to come to an agreement and the Caribbean crisis was resolved then. And right after that, the United States and the Soviet Union signed several agreements that banned nuclear weapons testing in the atmosphere and agreed not to proliferate them in the Caribbean Basin and Latin American countries. So let's wind the clock back 12 minutes. 1980, the beginning of a new escalation of the Cold War. The Soviet invasion of Afghanistan forced half of the countries to boycott the Moscow Olympics and newly elected President Reagan promised to destroy the evil empire. The clock hand reached four minutes to the end of mankind. 1984, 
feeling the weakness of the Soviet Communist Party apparatus, as well as knowing about the deplorable state of the Soviets in Afghanistan, Reagan initiated large-scale NATO exercises simulating nuclear missile launches at Moscow. At the same time, the president is developing a space anti-missile defense program. He gave it the name Star Wars. Three minutes to nuclear apocalypse. It seemed the end was near, but due to the turbulent events of 1990, the collapse of the socialist camp, communist regimes overthrown in Romania and Poland, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the clock is wound back 10 minutes. 1991, the official end of the Cold War, the reduction of nuclear arsenals of the two superpowers and the hope for the rapid development of friendly trade and globalization processes. Unprecedented for those times, 17 minutes. It was a triumph of Western democracies and the free world. The threat of nuclear war retreated. One of the two superpowers ceased to exist, as did the point of storing and operating hundreds and thousands of intercontinental ballistic missiles, the countries that inherited parts of the USSR's nuclear arsenal, such as Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan, agreed to abandon it. But the dreams of a lengthy period of international security passed as quickly as they came. As early as 1995, the world was again on the verge of nuclear war. The Russians mistook a peaceful scientific satellite for the launch of a nuclear missile from a submarine in the North Sea. Then President of the Russian Federation, Boris Yeltsin, activated the nuclear briefcase for the first time in a long time. Former CIA analyst Peter Vincent Pry considers this incident the most dangerous since the Caribbean crisis. In his book, War Scare, Russia and America on the Nuclear Brink, he writes that our planet was at pressing the red button from nuclear war. The clock hands began to converge again with the nuclear midnight. With each passing year, the situation only worsened. The threat of uncontrolled proliferation of nuclear weapons, terrorist threats, critical climate change, all this did not inspire optimism among world scientists. After 1991, the hands of the doomsday clock gradually but inexorably approached nuclear apocalypse. The authoritarian bloc countries began to unite and gain strength. The authoritarian regimes of Iran and North Korea rushed into nuclear developments at a rapid pace. The communist Chinese government is preparing to occupy Taiwan. Perhaps the most for the global confrontation was done by Russia, having occupied Crimea and part of Donbass in 2014. Later, President Putin decided to complete what he has started, and in 2022, more than a 200,000 army tried to capture the main Ukrainian cities and their capital, Kiev. After a crushing failure and huge losses, Russian politicians and propagandists began to bring up the subject of a nuclear strike on Ukraine and their main allies, the Baltic countries, Poland, Great Britain, and the USA. All this led to the worst forecast from the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists of All Time. The hands of the doomsday clock stopped at 90 seconds before the start of nuclear war. 2024, most likely, will not bring global detente. This year, more than 40 different elections are planned around the world in countries whose voices are crucial for restoring peace. It is greatly desired that all those coming to power closely watch the doomsday clock. Even though it is just an indicative metaphor for the current situation in the world, it does perform its main function. The clock shows time, the time that humanity measures itself every year. And we must do everything possible and impossible to make sure there is more left for us and for our descendants, until it is too late. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next video about the true power of nuclear weapons, how much the American air defense will be able to repel an attack, and where country leaders will hide if a nuclear war begins.